Audio phase issues are the silent killer of ambient mixes. Literally, understanding what phase cancellation is and how to avoid it is the real key to getting those big, lush mixes you're after. Hey, it's Marcus from Holosuite, and in today's video, I'm going to be going through what phase cancellation is, why it's so bad for ambient music, and how to avoid it. But before we get started, please don't forget to take a look at my free resources, links in the description below, and that includes a link to request a free stereo sample from me. All right, so the burning question, what is phase cancellation? To talk about phase, first we need to look at what's called polarity in an audio signal. This diagram shows a basic sine wave. You can see there's a line through the middle, let's call it the median and the wave alternates between going above and below this median line. When it's above the median line, it's positive. And when it's below the median line, it's negative. This directly correlates to how a speaker will play this wave. When the wave is in the positive section, it will be pushing the speaker cone out. And when it's negative, it'll be pulling it back. Now let's look at two sine waves playing at the same time. Here, they're perfectly in phase which means their positive and negative peaks perfectly line up. In this case, they'll both be pushing the speaker out, so you'll actually get a boost in volume. But what if the second signal becomes delayed for some reason? Now, the negative section of the second one is aligned perfectly with the positive section of the first one. But in this case, because the positive section of the wave is the same volume as the negative section of the other wave, they're going to completely cancel each other out. The speaker cone just won't move at all. It'll go to that zero position. If you have two more complex waveforms, you might get partial cancellation in some parts. So it won't go completely silent, but the signal will be much weaker. So the relationship that these two signals have in terms of how delayed they are from one another is called their phase relationship. Okay, but what does this mean in terms of our mixes? So for our mixes, the phase relationship that we're most interested in is between the left and right channels. When they come out of the speakers, through the air and to your ears. Unlike headphones, where the audio is being piped directly to your ears at the same distance, the audio from your speakers is usually in a much messier condition by the time it reaches your ears. Each channel probably won't arrive at the same time unless you're sitting in a perfect triangle and the reflections in a room will also interact with that original signal. So the rule of thumb that audio engineers use is to assume that on average, listeners on speakers will likely only hear a mono signal. So that's the parts of the signal that are the same across both speakers. That's why you'll hear a lot of advice about checking your mix in mono. It's an analog for the worst case speaker experience. So if that mono signal, the signal that's common across both the left and the right channels, has a poor phase relationship at any particular frequencies, they're gonna sound either weak or disappear completely when you're listening on speakers. So why is this so bad for ambient? Well, ambient music likes to be big and lush. And to do that, we generally make liberal use of delays and stereo reverbs and other layers of processing that might come from the same signal source, such as a single monosynth. But every layer that we're adding is another chance for that same signal to get delayed in just the wrong way that it ends up interacting with the original signal so that you may get partial or even total cancellation in some parts of the EQ spectrum. Reverbs tend to be the biggest killer here. I've seen it time and time again in ambient mixes, particularly the low mids area tends to just disappear when we collapse it to mono, likely because that blooming low end in the reverb is interacting with the original signal. You might have noticed this yourself if you've ever tried to EQ a part of your mix that feels particularly weak after adding a few layers. It might be because some parts of that EQ spectrum have become weakened or canceled out. One thing I used to do, and I'm sure a lot of ambient artists still do, is when we feel that this mix isn't getting as lush as we want it to, we try and move everything all the way out into the sides. But this can often cause other problems that can lead the mix to just sound mushier. So what do we do about this? Okay, so here I have a mix that is going out a little bit into negative correlation. Let's see if we can fix it. So let's listen to it first and I'll show you on the image arm. Um, 
So you can see on our correlation meter on the side here that it's starting to go into the negative. And you can see over here we've got a little, it's quite kind of half into the antiphase area, these outside areas, which we don't want. So we want to try and reduce that. We want to try and get closer to a positive correlation. So the first thing to do is to turn off all of our tracks and then find out which one is causing the problem or which ones are causing the problem. So let's turn them all off and then we'll listen to them one by one with our imager open. Okay, I'm guessing it's number five. I'm just going to check the other tracks. And the reverb. Okay, I think it's number five. Let's solo that. All right, that looks like it's what's causing all the trouble. We can check it with the reverb as well, just in case. Not an appreciable difference. I think it's something in number five here. All right, so let's work out what's causing this trouble. I think I've got a couple of reverbs on here. So what I'm gonna do is turn off anything that has some kind of effect and turn off my reverb here. Let's see what that sounds like. Right, so even our raw signal is a little bit out. What I might do is actually narrow the width of just the raw track. So I've got a copy of Ozone Imager over here. I might just move that back in here. And then I can use our width thing over here to turn it down just a little bit. just so it kind of takes us out of the negative correlation. They're looking pretty good. So that's a negative minus 24%. All right, so now we're in a good spot. Let's start turning back on our effects to see if there's anything else happening further up the chain. And I'm going back to our master version of the imager because we want to look at the overall. I'm dipping a little bit. We can narrow it a little bit more on the track. All right, let's check our other effects. Last thing I have here is this retro color, which has a couple of different things happening. So let's see whether they're causing any trouble. I'm just gonna turn these off. Let's turn them on one by one. Yeah, it looks like that stereo effect is causing some issues as well. I'm just gonna just turn that off. All right, looking good. And then I'll just turn on my last one, see if that's causing any trouble. All right, I think we're in the clear. And then last thing to do is to turn everything back on and see whether there's anything else that needs to be addressed. I'm dipping a little bit further, I might just check our reverb over here. I might just narrow our reverb here, I'll just add another version of Imager. Now we're sweet. Okay, so note that at no time did I do any widening of the master. And the reason is, is that I want to keep any widening or narrowing to happen as 
on as simple a level as possible. So if I'm only affecting one instrument, it's not as bad as doing it on the master where I'm affecting everything. So there's all kinds of things that might happen when I do that narrowing. So this is, should only be if you're completely desperate, if you have tried to adjust everything but nothing seems to be working, you can't find out what's going on, then you could try narrowing the master. So good luck with your future mixes. I'm looking forward to hearing how much clearer and bigger you can get them to sound now that you have this wonderful tool in your arsenal. Once again, please don't forget to check my free resources. If you found some value in this video, I'd really appreciate if you liked it and possibly even subscribe to my channel. This will allow me to keep making these kinds of tutorials for you to improve your ambient mixes and masters. And if you're still craving for some more content, perhaps you'd like to check out this video, which goes over some other common mistakes that I see a lot in ambient mixes. Until next time, keep making music. Cheers.